Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. My name is Glenn and today we have another review for you, this time of Earth Knight written for us by Jace. So a huge thank you to you, Jace. If you do enjoy our content, please do remember to subscribe for all things Switch all the time. Anyway, on with the review. You had me at Dragons. Throughout my life as a gamer, I'll freely admit to buying more than a few games simply because they put the word Dragon in the title. That's not quite the case here, but the trailer for Earth Knight promised fast-paced 2D platforming and a plethora of dragons, which is enough for me. Was it worth diving onto the back of these crazy beasts? Well, thank you to the developers for the review copy, and now, let's find out. The story here is simple, almost too simple to be honest. Earth has been taken over by thousands of dragons and humans are near extinct, forced to live in hiding or in ships orbiting the planet. You play as two humans who want nothing more than to take their home back by taking down one dragon at a time. That's really all you get. After the intro, the story never comes back into play. You never get to find out about the background of the two main characters, and specifically, I'd love to find out why and how Sydney gained spirit dragon powers, but it's not to be. At its core, Earth Knight is an endless runner. At the start of each run, you choose from one of two characters, Stanley or Sydney, who then will jump out of the airship that is their home and begin free falling onto the back of a dragon. The two characters have different skill sets while running, so the choice is meaningful. Sydney has the ability to perform a secondary action after jumping, including a double jump, forward dash, or a downward dash. Stanley, on the other hand, can only jump once, but has the option of a standard jump or a long jump. With Sydney's additional abilities, I found her much easier to use in general, especially to reach higher vertical areas within each level, where most of the secrets of the game are hidden. However, it was much easier to maintain combo chains with Stanley and attack enemies with his character-specific power-up. More on this later. The start of each run is the same with your character landing on a purple dragon, which serves mostly as an introductory level. Once you've landed, you immediately begin running across the screen from left to right. You have some small control over momentum, being able to use the D-pad or the left joystick to slow yourself down or speed yourself up a little as the situation calls for it. Other than that though, for the most part, you only need to worry about when to jump. While running through the procedurally generated levels, you will have to make split second decisions to deal with the random series of enemies, platforms, and loot to collect. Running into enemies will knock out a piece of your heart meter, and once this runs out, the ship will come down and beam you back in, and you'll have to start the level again. The goal in each level is to collect as much loot as you can and make it to the dragon's head. Once you've reached the head, a mini boss battle of sorts will start. You have a limited amount of time to bring down the dragon and gain a piece of its head, such as a fang or an eyeball. Even if you don't kill the beast, so long as you make it to the head, then your run will continue and you will continue to free fall through the various layers of Earth's atmosphere. As you fall, you will see various other dragons flying around and you can maneuver your character to target specific types of dragons. I briefly mentioned power-ups earlier, and the loot you collect throughout your runs will be converted to water, the currency that enables you to purchase or upgrade these. Additionally, they can be unlocked by killing the various dragons, and you will unlock one power-up for each new type of dragon you take down. The power-ups include speed boots, a pair of boots that will allow one extra jump, or the ability to take down monsters. The monster-killing power-ups further differentiate the two characters, as Stanley does not need any additional input from the player to attack enemies, and he will automatically swing his sword at anything he can kill. Sydney, on the other hand, requires using her dash moves to take down enemies, meaning if you double jump, then you are left vulnerable. Throughout each level, you will also come across dragon eggs, three in total per dragon. Collecting these allows you to do more damage to the dragon's head, making it much more likely that you will kill it in time. A very nice touch is that each type of dragon has a different rhythm to how you need to take it down. For instance, those in the first layer of the atmosphere are fairly easy to take down so long as you let your attack charge up fully, whereas the dragons in the second layer require smashing the B button as fast as you can. The gameplay loop is satisfying and fun for the most part. Finding hidden secrets feels great and there is definitely a one more run feel to the game when you have a successful run and unlock a new power up that might help you get closer to reaching Earth. I say for the most part though because there are some issues. Playing the game in long stretches can see it becoming stale as you start to recognise patterns in the procedural generation. 
the different dragons will start to feel familiar and the game can get boring if you have a string of less successful runs. Some enemies are nearly impossible to see as they are tiny and blend in with the loot you are supposed to be collecting, meaning you will often unfairly take damage just because you couldn't see the threat. Additionally, the physics are not perfect and jumping on the heads of enemies or on platforms sometimes feels just a bit off. In regards to jumping on enemies, it seems like you have to jump on the very back of the enemy or in some cases even behind them as jumping directly on their heads often ended in me taking damage. There is one last issue specific to the Switch version which I'll get to in just a bit. Overall though, the gameplay is a lot of fun in short bursts with a rewarding collect and upgrade loop that makes you want to keep trying but it has some flaws dragging it down and gameplay overall receives 14 out of 20. The controls are simple yet responsive and score 18 out of 20. The visuals are my favourite aspect of the game. The hand drawn and painted levels are beautiful and colourful. The various dragons have their own personality and unique traits as do the two main characters. I especially appreciate that during the character select screen, Sydney and Stanley are shown in different positions or doing different activities such as reading a book or cuddling up asleep in a blanket. The monster designs and animations are great as well. It's hard for me to criticise too much about the visual presentation of the game. However, the performance on the Switch is a different story. During times where you gain significant momentum and lots of loot and or monsters are flooding the screen, the game will chug to a crawl. More often than not, this would mean taking damage as you can't make split second decisions when you can't see what's going on. This is the greatest flaw with the game because when this happens during a really successful run and ends it abruptly, it makes it difficult to want to try again. Much like the visuals, the audio is solid in Earth Knight. The original chiptune soundtrack is upbeat and fast paced as it should be. Each dragon has its own boss music that kicks in when you reach the head and it typically helped determine the rhythm to attack the dragon with, which was a nice touch. Sound effects are suitable, but not exactly a standout feature. Whilst the visuals were lovely, the performance drags it down significantly and affects the gameplay to a degree and they score a disappointing 13 out of 20 with this in mind. Should the game receive a patch in regards to performance, you could certainly add a few more points here in future. Audio on the other hand serves its purpose very well and scores 16 out of 20. Earth Knight costs £12.59, €13.99 or $14.99 and this is the same cost you'll find on the PC so I'm happy to report there's no switch tax here. In my opinion, this price point is just about right providing they fix the performance issues. The gameplay loop is a lot of fun and the runs are usually only 10 to 20 minutes long making it a perfect pick up and play game to pair with the mobility of the switch. With tons of secrets to find and power-ups to unlock, the game has lots of replayability. As it stands with the rough performance, I'd say wait for a sale, but it's definitely one to keep an eye on, and I enjoyed my time with it. Value scores 16 out of 20. To conclude, Earth Knight is a unique take on the Endless Runner, with a beautiful art style and a very good soundtrack to pair with a rewarding gameplay loop that is perfect in short bursts and on the go. Whilst it suffers from some design flaws and performance hiccups, it is still a decent title on the Switch. Earth Knight scores a Switch Up score of 77%. A big thank you to Jace for writing this one for us. Please do remember to leave a like if you like what you've just seen. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.